My name is uh, Timothy Henty. I'm a conductor and I studied at the Royal College of Music between 2000 and 2005. <laughs> When I was very young, uh, my father was a conductor of amateur operatic societies. So I sort of had it in my blood, really, and it, it came up via theatre. I, I started uh, studying as a percussionist, and that was my instrument that I took right the way through to the Royal College of Music. Back then, the professor of conducting was Neil Thompson, and he was in charge not only of the conducting students, but also of the RCM Sinfonietta. That was the training orchestra and the symphony orchestra for the slightly older students had guest conductors. So Neil really trained the orchestra uh, in terms of drilling the discipline of the strings and he did it remarkably well. And in the very first rehearsal I was sitting in the, on the timpani, in the very first rehearsal that I did with him and I thought, not only do I want to be a conductor, but I want to conduct like him. <laughs> So when I graduated from college, I had a fantastic opportunity to work with Barry Wordsworth, who at the time was in between his music directorships at the Royal Ballet. So I turned up and uh, ended up cover conducting at the, Royal, uh, at the Royal Ballet for a long time, which basically means turn up, learn it, and if the conductor breaks their leg, <laughs> you're on, and if not, you're not. Um, there's a wonderful opportunity to kind of learn by osmosis. And from that, the Royal Ballet gave me my debut. So at 23, I conducted at the Limbury. At 24, I conducted Campalia at the Royal Ballet. And uh, that was the first professional symphony orchestra that I'd ever conducted, the orchestra of Royal Opera House Covent Garden. And it was absolutely terrifying. But from that, I could start to do other ballet. And I ended up with three or four years at Northern Ballet and then went over to Dutch National Ballet and Scottish Ballet and, and, and so on, and, and built up a sort of a 10 year period of working with some top ballet companies. More recently, I've got into film conducting. What I mean by that is live to projection. So what we do is we uh, take a film, uh, for example, I'm working on all the Harry Potter concerts, and we perform it with everything but the musical soundtrack. And the musical soundtrack is played live in sync uh, by the orchestra. So at the beginning of lockdown, we didn't really know how long lockdown was going to last. Uh, previously, just before that, I'd made my debut with the London Mozart Players and uh, they're a fantastically innovative group that asked me to do a selection of videos as part of their At Home with LMP um, content, which was going out to everybody at the time. So I did four films about the craft of conducting. I didn't talk about scores or interpretation, not because I didn't want to, but because that's often talked about. So I went off the beaten track and talked about the craft and technical side of what we do. And after that, they asked me, would I do Peter and the Wolf? And that was a hugely daunting prospect because uh, I had to get everybody playing remotely. So all the violins did their own thing in their own house. And uh, it, was, it was a very, very difficult project, but we got through it. And uh, I'm very proud of Peter and the Out of all of the LMP projects, the biggest challenge was the audio for Peter and the Wolf. Um, that was extremely difficult to get everybody, to corral everybody together. And the interesting thing is that I went right back to my time at the Royal College of Music doing composition for screen as an undergraduate module, where we started to learn about music technology and how to use logic and uh, so on and so forth. What we ended up doing is I, I created a click track for everybody and the whole orchestra played their own parts in isolation on their mobile phones and came back and together with a, a very good friend of mine, the conductor Ben Pope, also an RCM alumnus, we basically fitted together these things. So I think, you know, well over a thousand edits later, we managed to get these parts together. In terms of directing, particularly with Peter, um, because I was dealing with live animals and children, 
it wasn't possible to be strict about what they had to do. I had to ask the uh, parents to sort of say, well, you know, could we have a shot of her in the tree or could we have a shot of him coming down? Basically, you work with what you've got at that point, which is slightly different from a conductor because a conductor's got a, a score in front of them. Um, and this, I didn't have a script at all. I just had a set of things that I would like. Um, and I went through, you know, a lot of time of watching dogs run around parks and sort of thinking, right, well, these four seconds here are appropriate. And if I, if I sort of retroactively sync that with the music so that the head turn is on that chord, then I've got what I want. It's those sorts of things. Um, so it was a jigsaw puzzle. Um, so there are similarities between conducting and directing for sure, because you're trying to get in the end, you know, your vision of the piece through. I think it's for every musician, really. It's not just a conductor thing. I think knowledge of uh, being able to put together short and long form videos is extremely important for people's branding. You know, the, qu the quality of a, a, of a smartphone camera is such now that you can do, well, I certainly did, you know, most if not all of your filming that way. And then knowledge of some kind of editing suite. For me, it's Final Cut Pro, but it could be Premiere Pro. It could be, uh, you know, a free software program, something that can edit together a video to high quality. The tip I'd give for starting with these things, to be perfectly honest, is do what you would do as a musician. You know, when you're starting at seven, year old, seven years old, you don't expect a contract. Um, you have to learn how to do these things. So take any opportunity, learn your craft first, do it for the love of it, and then you'll find that you've got the right tools. Because people have seen what I've done and said, oh, actually, could you come and do this? Could you come and do that? And I've been doing uh, post-production editing for recitals and all of that kind of stuff, which I would never have time to do normally. I'm, I have a busy schedule as a conductor. I go all over the world with Harry Potter and, and then I've got operas and uh, things coming in. I would never have time to do that. And actually it's sort of been interesting to have a change of career for a bit. Look at things the other side, very, very strange, uh, you know, uh, looking at a concert that you've not been involved in and look at it and suddenly become sort of, you know, an engineer, a technician and, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, one of the reasons why that's worked is the musical knowledge behind it. I think with a good musical knowledge and a limited technical knowledge, you can come up with a killer combination for online content. Mm -hmm.